Good morning, Coach. Uh, first, really important question. What's up with all the Sunday games? How did this come to pass? Well, it's a lot of it is, um, and it's it, it's it's bad for our fans, obviously. I, I you know, but we they don't want to have football game. Uh, they do not want to have games on football Saturdays. Uh, it's it's too much of a burden with pa parking, for, with staffing, all that type of thing. And then this week we have uh, graduation in Bramlage. So, and then you also have the other conflict of volleyball now, mm -hmm. um, you know, so we have a lot of different elements that we have to deal with. And I know a lot of our fans come from a long way away. So when you have the weeknight games, it's difficult for them to get to. Um, and then we end up with the, you know, the Sundays last week with Wichita, um, I asked for Saturday. I thought it was, you know, we ended up with a great crowd uh, there. I thought Saturday, but they wanted the, they were really more interested in the, having enough days to prepare after playing Oklahoma State. Um, so they, they opted for that Sunday, but uh, that's, that's where, that's where we're at with all that. <laughs> um, and, and also when you, you get to conference season and a more regular schedule that fans can kind of, uh, embrace, I guess. Um, what's this program need to do to kind of earn back some of that alumni attendance? I'm not saying support, but people haven't been showing up the way that they have in the past. Well, I think it's, uh, you know, you win. I mean, it's pretty simple. You win, you get, you know, you get people get fired up. You have interest in it. Um, I still go back. I still remember, and I'll, you know, people always, you always reminisce about history and all that stuff. And, uh, we won the big 12 championship in 13. And, uh, you know, that was a group, I think the winning is class in history of the school. Um, so it was a pretty, you know, you hope a love group and our last game, we didn't have a full crowd on a, on a Wednesday night against TCU at home. And, you know, so sometimes I think people remember Kansas games. They remember certain these elite games, but there's a lot of other games where we had pretty good, uh, you know, pretty good teams and we didn't, it's, it's just a hard, it's a hard product when you don't have a population base in Manhattan, but there's no doubt we have to win. We, I was, I was excited about our win at Wichita. We, we got, it had a pretty good, a really good student turnout for uh, Wednesday. Uh, you know, we needed to capitalize on that, to be honest, uh, to, to keep people like fired up. Now, you know, now we got to move forward. We can't can't do anything about. We just got to win, and that's the most important thing. And and keep getting better as a as a, a, a team individual. And uh, one final thing for me, uh, would you tell the guys about um, the loss on Wednesday night and and how to kind of get over that hump because they were so close to winning that game. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it hurt. And, you know, I tried not to go too crazy after the game. Um, you know, I, I've learned to take a deep breath. Uh, you know, sometimes it's better to wait a day or so uh, to, you know, maybe get after them. Uh, you know, I, I know it hurt. It came, you know, I told them that we have to get, we have to be more mature and execute better. Uh, we have to be you know, we, we talked all year about being mission focused, staying focused on the things you can control, being a great teammate, uh, execution, being together, all those things you can control. And, uh, and, you know, we've talked a lot about grit, about, you know, the, the, you know, being gritty down the stretch and we got, we were gritty against Wichita and we got stops and we, and you got to make the play. So, um, you know, it just, uh, it, it hurt because I, I think we had made some steps even without Nigel. Um, you know, it, it hurt not to have Selton give us, you know, something. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we, I thought we were good enough to win that game and find a way to win it if we did a few more little things that make a difference. So you learn from it, hope you get healthier and, and take a, uh, a step. The, the Green Bay game is still important to come back and play well. Um, it, it is a factor. I keep it trying to explain to them about net ratings. And if you study the net ratings um, and, and all the other uh, analytic ratings, 
you know, your efficiency, how you play every game is important for you to move up in that, uh, those net ratings. So we, we got it. We got to come and play well against uh, Green Bay on Sunday. Thanks coach. Yep. Uh, next question to Kellis Robinette. Uh, with that in mind, do you enter these games? Like the score's always 0-0. Zero, zero. I mean, I know you don't want to beat somebody by like 90 or anything, but if it's 15 late, do you keep the guys in to make sure that it's an impressive win? Well, I don't – you know, I, I'm not going to do that. I, I just hope we play well. And that's the thing they got to understand that, uh, you know, that it, it is important. One, we got to get better. How do you get better? You, you know, the, every game you get better and play – if you play the right way uh, – you know, we just had we can't have as many bad possessions on offense, um, more breakdowns. Uh, you know, we still held the team 12 under their average. We held them under 40 percent, you know, or whatever it was, 40 percent, 29 from three. Uh, you know, we did some good things, but we needed to be a little better. And and that that's to me, that's the most important thing is continue growing as a team, getting better as a team. Health wise, you expect the Nigel and Selton to be ready for you um nigel you know is 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 finished day three four of the protocol uh today he'll be in non-contact practice tomorrow he'll be in contact practice um you know the goal hopefully sunday play some uh get get some legs under him and get that experience again and uh you know i I don't want him to go two weeks without a game going to nebraska so i hope we can get him some minutes um Selton, you know, as of yesterday, I think he felt a little better, you know, and um, he just didn't have his pop and zip that he that uh, that we we've been accustomed to uh, with him. And that that there's no doubt that hurt us in the game. And I know it's just one play, but when you did go look at the the replays, the final one where um, Ish drove to the basket, um, were, were there. Were, were there uh, better reads you could have made there? It looked like you had some other guys maybe open. What did you think of it? Yeah, you know, it, you know, we thought again. We we had talked about it before. We wanted to get Lewis and and some kind of action because he, when we watched, you know, defensively, he was probably the one that struggled the most. Uh, he did get over the screen. I thought Ish could have shot it right away or the one quick pull up if he didn't have that. Um, you know, they had maybe uh, Casey on a little drop down because their big guy switched out. Then he, when he drove, he, you know, he had Mike in the corner, um, you know, that he could have got it and made a pass. But in his mind, uh, just talking to him after, he was unsure of the time. And, and he just wanted to get a shot up. I, I thought even at the end, if you look, the kid's arms are down. If he if he goes up strong and goes through his arms, they got to call a foul because he's in he's in the he's in the circle, and uh, you know it's it's the rule that you if you go through the arms in the circle, you're going to get a foul. So uh, you know I'm sure hindsight, you know a lot of things you wish would have happened, but it didn't. But that's not the play that Wonder lost the game. Um, you know from ten minutes to to five minutes is what was the difference in the game. And that those those are the breakdowns, those that mental toughness stuff that we have to get better at. Thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it. Uh, next question to Michael Goins. Yeah, Bruce. How often do you go through those late game situations and practice scenarios? How I excuse me. How often do you go through those late game uh, hey, last I ten say, second uh, situations? Two, three times a week, two times a week, we, we put them in different situations. Uh, usually we do a, a like a shot clock play and then we do a transition out of it. So we'll say seven seconds on the shot clock and then, uh, you know, we're pushing it. And this is what we're looking for with, uh, you know, they'll, they'll have uh, almost the same scenario, 11, 12, 13 seconds. So we'll say tie score. Uh, one team's got to, you know, out of bounds play that they got to execute. And, and then depending winner, you know, score, if they score, or don't score, you're going in transition and then you're running your stuff down there. We, we do that, you know, probably a couple of times a week. And do you feel like Davion Bradford take kind of a first step on Wednesday night? 
yeah, I, I, I was happy with his second half. Um, you know, and again, I don't, I told him in the first half when he came out, I said, you don't have your legs, your bounce yet, but you got to use your body and be, be a seven footer and protect it with your shoulders. And I thought the second half, he did a better job of uh, just, you know, using his body, uh, using his footwork uh, to get opportunities to score. And, and he was productive for us. So, uh, you know, it'd be nice for both those guys. You know, obviously it'd be nice to get all our guys going at the same time. And I, I think to me, the big word now is consistency. If we're going to make progress um, and growth as a team, we got to get consistent production uh, on both ends of the court from all those, all those guys. Thank you, Bruce. Other questions for coach? Oh, another question for Kellis. Yeah, can you give us a little bit of a preview on Green Bay? Um, who, who do they resemble? Who else is on your schedule? Uh, you know, it's uh, Bo Ryan's son, obviously, and I got to go against him a lot. Uh, they're running some of his swing. Uh, you know, I guess you would compare it to Wisconsin. Uh, you know, it, 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 in, in some aspects, they are a young team. Uh, they played some people really close. Uh, you know, they, they've kind of let some lead slip against some – uh, you know, Greensboro's been really good, um, had them, I think, double digits and, and let that game. Indiana State came down to the end. Uh, Wisconsin's the only team that just kind of throttled them. And, uh, you know, they just couldn't they couldn't score. I, you know, I think a young team going into Madison uh, probably got a little bit of deer in the headlight moments and and struggled. So uh, it defensively uh, kind of. I guess they, the Wisconsin way, the, the pack, uh, you know, defense and, uh, you know, we, we're going to, you know, I, I just hope we're, you know, mentally ready to play the game at the right way. I think that's, that's my most important thing. Thanks Bruce. Uh, next question to Grant Flanders. Hey, coach, I just got one for you. Um, I know it's after a loss, but I'm just wondering if you can take any solace after a one-point loss to Marquette when you're without Nigel Pack, maybe your best player, and then Celta Miguel, too, was hobbled. You know, I'd like to take solace, but it doesn't <laughs> do any good. You know, I mean, it just, to be honest, uh, you know, hey, Marquise, you know, it's, it's sad that, you know, this guy almost had a triple-double. You know, I think Wyatt Thompson seventh time in the history that anyone had double double with assists and you know he almost got a triple double and he's the smallest guy in the court but we lost so it doesn't really matter you know it, it uh you know so that that's uh you know that's the part that you know it it, it still comes down to winning losing you know in the long haul with the fans tim talked about you know getting people in the stance you know they they come when you, you create excitement, um, you know, so, and usually winning's excitement, uh, you know, but at the same time, I, as a coach, I have to focus on growth. I have, that's my thing, getting better. And, and that's, you know, we played some tough teams and uh, we've competed with them. Now can we find ways to beat them? It's, uh, uh, you know, it's just, uh, you know, I, I, again, I, I always say to you guys, you know, coaches take it really hard. The fans take it hard. You guys play off of that. The players probably are more resilient and come back a lot easier than, than uh, you know, the coaches and the fans. And as a coach, I got to do a good job. Our staff has to do a good job of keeping them uh, positive and keeping them moving forward, but understanding that we have to correct some of the things. To our guys' credit, Yesterday was a day off. I believe I saw every one of them, including the walk-ons, uh, from watching film to doing stretching to doing treatment to uh, shooting. Uh, Nigel was in at least three times yesterday that I saw. Um, so these guys care. And if you care, that gives you a chance. There's no doubt about that. And then actually I do, I thought of one more. I mean, I think, you know, it seems like there's still a lot more potential to this team. If they do come to their full potential by conference play in a really deep big 12 this season, how do you see them faring? You know, I, 
I think we can be very competitive, but it is scary. It's probably scary for every big 12 team. You know, I just, uh, you know, I saw something the other day after I, I, our game against Wichita, somebody sent me a, a tweet like, uh, you know, the, the big 12 has no bottom. You know, it's just, uh, it's, it's going to be tough. And the teams with that, that grit, that resilience, that can find ways to win close games, um, you know, it's, it's going to be, those teams are going to survive. And then along the way, you always, you know, we've been through some injuries, we've been through some things, but, uh, you know, that's going to be a factor also. I, I talked to Dean White the other day, and Dean got back going again after a little injury, and they beat the Bulls really soundly, and Bulls are good. And, and Dean goes, Coach, COVID. And I said, what do you mean? He said, Bulls players were out. And, 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 and then two more tested positive after. So, I mean, there's a lot of craziness that can still happen throughout the year. And, uh, you know, we just got to stay the course and, and keep helping them. Thanks, Coach. Uh, next question to Wyatt Thompson. Good morning, Coach. A couple of quick questions for you. Can you explain a little bit about the principles of their pack defense, I guess, and then – Secondarily, after playing the quote name schools back to back like Wichita State and Marquette, what are your challenges of the having the guys up up for a game like this? I, I yeah, think that would be I difficult. Think, you know, and that's a great question. It's what I said earlier. I, you know, we got to be mentally ready to play the game the right way, and that's important. And and I hurt. I hope that it hurt a little bit the loss, and we come out with a, a great passion. But it's also, I think some of it's learning to prepare every game because you guys just talked about the, the you know, the Big 12. We got, after Christmas, 19 hard games and there's going to be no let up. Um, and there's, I know there's a lot of leagues with good depth. I mean, you watch Rutgers beat, uh, you know, Rutgers beat Purdue yesterday, number one team in the country and Rutgers just lost by 40 on, uh, on Monday night or, you know, earlier in the week. So, uh, it, you know, we're that mental preparation. I think it's going to be so important with our, our growth as a team, our leadership, all the things we've talked about. Uh, and then the back line defense is, it's more of a, you know, it's, it's coach Bennett, uh, Tony's dad, uh, Dick years ago, he started the pack and he started the pressure, the push, uh, deep, you know, where he, there was a pressure defense and then he went, went back to a, a pack defense and, I think at one time he used both of them and then he really went back to relying on protecting that three point line, staying in gaps. Uh, um, a lot of it too has to deal with ball screens that, that you don't, um, you don't overdo it. You, you make pe keep people in front of you. You play off of people's tendencies. What do guys want to do now? They want to shoot layups or threes. So you, you know, you've got hands on the threes and you protect the paint against the twos, uh, you know, and, and, so it's, uh, I think movement hurts it. Um, being able to get downhill into gaps because they're not, they're not in, they're not, uh, you know, if you move them and then get into the paint, they're not in position to help. Um, and then if you can get quick ball screens out of transition before they're sit, sitting back in the pack, that helps also. Appreciate it. Thanks. Yep. Any other questions before we let Coach go? Okay. Coach, thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.